Ken, you want to come, come on down? Uh, my name is uh, Ken Scholes, and I'm actually here to undertake the treatment this afternoon. Uh, we're really hoping. It's been a hellish road, um, and I'm really very grateful to you, Doctor, for bringing me out here. I wanted to give you a small token of uh, thank you, my you're appreciation. Very kind. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thanks for having Not me. Not of those scripted. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, not thank at all, you. but thank you very much. This is Ken Scholes. I'm an author with Tor Books. I write science fiction and fantasy. Um, my series, The Psalms of Isaac, is uh, being critically acclaimed both here in the U.S. and overseas now, and I am a, a sufferer of PTSD. Um, my PTSD comes from the, the silent battlefield of childhood trauma, being raised by a borderline mother with a lot of crazy hurtful people around me. A couple of years ago I started, uh, my parents died um, in the span of about 13 months and in the middle of that my nephew was killed in Afghanistan and then uh, my wife had a difficult pregnancy with twins and then I became the a first time father of twins um, all while my book career was uh, starting to take off and it just kind of all crushed me. Uh, new symptoms started to show up, um, night sweats. I mean, I'm standing here now, I'm dripping wet because I'm in a room full of people and I have PTSD. I read about uh, Dr. Lipov's work um, about two months ago at the ptsdforum.org. Uh, it was started by an Australian soldier. And they were talking about this new miracle that uh, a jab in the neck could cure PTSD. I'm getting ready to go through my first treatment. I'm very excited about it, very hopeful that this will be what I need and what my family and I need to get me back on track, get me feeling good again. Okay, well, I am uh, I'm back in Hoffman Estate uh, for my third stellate ganglion block with Dr. Lipov. Uh, flew out yesterday, uh, woke up this morning, went down to the uh, Ashton Surgery Center and had the uh, third treatment. Came out about 10 minutes after the, the process feeling uh, my head got quieter again. It's an amazing experience when that happens. It had been about 18, 19 months since my last block. Um, I had it in March of 2011, I think and uh, came out then um, shortly on the heels of my first block in February 2011 and saw instant results from both blocks and actually they both, they both served me very well. Came out about six weeks ago for my first stellate ganglion block with Dr. Lipov and uh, it was a pretty life-changing experience. Um, when I got here, you know, I was having full-blown symptoms. I'd been having them for about two years. Despair, anger, panic, mild to intense paranoia, panic attacks that would last upwards of five or six days, um, significant depression, uh, night sweats where I'd have to change out my pillow once or twice a night. In some instances, rage, and most people who know me know I'm not an angry guy. That Nobody would expect me to be punching walls. And after the block, I... Uh, Went home and had about a week where there were no symptoms whatsoever. And then about day six or seven, some of the more minor symptoms settled in that I've lived with most of my life. Mild dose of hypervigilance and hyperarousal, occasional night sweats, night terrors, but nothing like what I'd been experiencing before. Uh, before I went down, uh, before I came out to, to uh, Dr. Lipov's clinic, I had, um, I had months where I only had four good days. And I've actually had all good days since uh, since my last trip. I haven't had a tranquilizer since I came to Chicago the first time. Um, I've not been triggered, though I've been in the midst of all the same kinds of activities and events that would have triggered me. Being around crowds, far less uh, stressful. I uh, can go out in public and I, you know, I don't break a sweat just from being around a crowd. Um, feel calm and, uh, and at ease. It's been a nice change. Everybody's noticing that. Everybody's noticing that I'm doing better. I used to have to get up, um, these last couple years, I'd have to get up in the middle of a meeting at work and go take a tranquilizer just to be able to stay in the meeting. And now, nah, I'm just doing fine. My therapist is, um, she was astounded. She could instantly see the difference in me. I came in, um, I came in the Tuesday after my Thursday treatment and uh, she was blown away. She continues to be blown away. I've seen her uh, every other week the last six weeks. And we're, we're running out of things to talk about because um, I'm doing great. I'm feeling great. She, um, I think that the word she used to describe me before the treatment was tortured. And uh, she, um, she can see a, a, just a vast difference. I actually believe he saved my life. I, I remember telling my own doctor just a few months ago that I couldn't do another year. I was not going to be able to do another year. The EMDR was not working um, nearly as quickly as it needed to. The medication was barely touching it. Uh, the tranquilizers were, were barely touching it. And I couldn't see me getting through another year of the way I was feeling. 
um, in the span of just a, a few minutes uh, on the docks table and I, I felt like a new guy. Well, I went off my medication within about a month of the second block and uh, have been unmedicated as far as daily medications go since then. I started to see some resurgence of symptoms uh, around October when my wife's dad died um, unexpectedly and then you know things settled down a little bit when my stepmother died in April they're back again um, and then they began to steadily kind of get worse um, as I uh, you know, just rolled through that grief process. The symptoms that presented were relatively minor. Most of them were symptoms I'd lived with all my life and didn't even realize were my PTSD. If there was a dial setting, they were on a low setting as opposed to the off the charts setting that I had when I came out the first time. Coming out in February, I came out at my wit's end and did not know whether or not I was gonna end up dead or in a hospital um, if this didn't work. It's kind of indescribable. I. I don't think I've ever felt quite like this. Um, last night I got back to the, uh, I got back from the treatment, and um, and usually I would go hide in a cave, stay away from people. I actually felt like being out with people. Went out, um, had a couple of drinks, um, came back. When I when I went to sleep, I slept. I, I don't think I've slept that deep in a long time. Um, and even right after, you know, right after the injection, I felt. Um, I felt different, I felt like kind of a calm, but it, it seems to have built overnight. Uh, I woke up this morning, just everything was bright, everything was, um, I had a, my, my sense of confidence uh, is, is back in ways that I haven't experienced in a while. It takes five, 10 minutes, and, and then it just works. It, it's, um, I, I'm still trying to get my head around how, how amazing uh, this experience is. I, I don't feel like, I don't feel like the same guy I was yesterday. I feel relaxed, I feel calm. Uh, feel confident and capable. I'm not really worried about anything. There have been several instances during the day where I've stopped and thought, you know, this would have caused my you know, chattering head monkeys to go off a couple of days ago and I'd have to put a whole lot of energy into calming them down and now they're just kind of quiet on their own. You know, I spent uh, about seven years on antidepressants using SSRIs, but I'm extremely sensitive to anything that, that screws with my serotonin levels. It varies from pill to pill. I was on one, uh, one of the serotonin pills um, affects her. I, uh, I developed tremors, and uh, I, even after I was weaned off the drug, I continued to have the tremors for a few months, um, to the point where there were times I couldn't drive. Um, and of course, the clonazepam, it's an, it's an addictive uh, a narcotic. I, I, I'm not interested in, in doing that. It, it takes 30 minutes to work. And I was very resistant to going back on meds. But finally, uh, when things, you know, the, I started running out of rope, uh, I went on to uh, Wellbutrin, which is, um, it's been okay, but it's, um, it's, I mean, obviously my symptoms were continuing. Uh, I was on Wellbutrin for the, for the depression and then uh, clonazepam on an as-needed basis for anxiety attacks. Um, but you know, this morning I woke up and I was wondering why I was, why am I gonna take this pill? I, I'm feeling pretty good, this works. I mean, I've, I've, I don't think there's ever been a pill I've taken that's caused me to feel normal. One of the biggest difficulties uh, with the PTSD for me is when it spiked as, uh, in such a huge way in 2009, it completely it wiped out my ability to write, and I was uh, I, I just wrestled with it for over a year. Uh, after I came in for my first and second block, I thought that I'd get right back to work, um, and ultimately I didn't. It took actually another six months. What I discovered is that after the first and second blocks, um, it took a little while for me to process all of the events that had caused those flare-ups: the you know loss of my mother, the loss of my father, the loss of my nephew, the birth of my daughters. Um, the stress of going from being a nobody uh, writer to a writer that people were sending letters to and writing mean things about on the internet, all of that. Um, and so it took a while. I spent about six months processing all of that. And then uh, one day it just, I felt the engines uh, rev up and started in and uh, started writing again. Um, unfortunately though, when, when uh, Jen's dad died in October, um, you know, the writing shut down for about four or five months. Then, it, you know, after, after a period of time, get through the grief process, that kicked back in. Uh, and then the same was true, actually, with my stepmother. I was back to work on the book, uh, going like gangbusters, and then when she died, um, I pushed through for about two weeks and then suddenly couldn't write again for about four or five months. And then, of course, got hit with this, uh, this pretty 
aggressive deadline. I needed to have the book done in about two weeks' time, or it was going to cause a lot of difficulty. I mean, we'd, we'd already told the world that the book was going to be out at a certain time. We were planning for it, so, uh, you know, fortunately, even with the, with the symptoms coming back, they weren't such that they've prevented me from writing. I've not, I've not had any significant difficulty writing since, uh, since I got through the processing of the events that triggered the, the bigger flare-ups with the PTSD. One particularly significant trauma in my childhood was the death of my brother when I was four. And I suspect strongly that, that death is probably always going to be a type of trigger for me when I lose somebody close to me. Um, because that, you know, that's the one loss I can point to early in my childhood, but we think the PTSD was probably in place even earlier than that, just based on the work I've done with, uh, with my therapist. One of the hardest things for me in this um, is that my children were my trigger. Having children um, set into motion this, this flare. By losing my parents certainly was a big setup for it, but um, but having children was a, a major trigger. My children crying in the night would send me um, wanting to, to flee the house into the, into the night, to get as far away as I could. It was horrible, as badly as I had always wanted to be a dad, to suddenly discover I had these two beautiful little girls, and there were times when I just couldn't be with them because I couldn't handle, um, I couldn't handle the, the, the triggering. After coming to Chicago that first time, I went home with this, I, I, my, I'd never had so much calm uh, in my head, so little noise in my head. And it gave me an opportunity to come back to my daughters and re-experience them through an entirely different lens, um, a different perception. And it really, um, it amazes me how much joy uh, I could find in parenting once I didn't have that monkey on my back. In hindsight, doing a lot of work with a therapist, it, it, you know, when you have a child, something happens to you biologically. A bond is created between you and that little person. Kids like me who grew up in, in really troubled homes, abusive families, neglectful families, um, we don't know what that bond feels like. When I had my children, um, I felt that bond probably for the first time in my life. And I think in hindsight that experiencing that bond enraged me because I understood exactly what had been taken away from me as a child. Um, and by the time that experience happened, the people who had put me in that situation were already dead and I couldn't go back and ask any more questions or get a better sense of closure around that. All I could do was try to move forward and accept the fact that there weren't going to be any answers for me. Um, and it just shut me down. I think that, that I had no way of understanding. People had always asked me all my life, why aren't you more angry about your childhood? And I always said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not angry about it. Oh, I was angry. I had no idea how angry I was. It was buried so deep that it couldn't come out until I had my own children and saw what had not been done and provided for for me. You know, of course, as a result of this, now that I know that it works, um, you know, my life is full of people, and within that tribe of people, there are lots of folks suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, and I'm, uh, I'm really happy to be able to say that some of them, as a result of what's happened to me, have come out and seen the doc themselves. I have a writing friend in New Zealand who just had hers just a few weeks ago. Uh, huge success. It's going, she's going great. Things are going very well for her. She came all the way from New Zealand. I don't know if she gets points for traveling the furthest or not, but she uh, came out and had the block and, uh, and is experiencing a change of life as a result of it. Another really um, great story, um, somebody was Googling PTSD and they came across an interview that I gave somewhere where I talked about having PTSD and I got this note from a husband whose wife had PTSD from um, childhood stuff. And um, he wrote in the fit of desperation just trying to get any handle on anything that could be done to help her because since their children had been born, she'd experienced a flare up. And I had a chance to talk to him on the phone. I told him about what the doctor was doing. I gave him the contact information for the foundation. Um, and then, you know, you just never know if you're going to hear uh, anything back. But about three months later, I got this beautiful letter back from him saying that their marriage, their family was intact and doing well because she had gone, she'd received the block, it had worked. Um, so I, I've pretty much decided that this is, this is my cause too. If it worked for me, um, it can work for others. It's easier than giving blood. It's an amazing development, I, I think, in, in a 
affliction that I think is, I think we're talking pandemic levels, given the number of troops coming home, given the number of people exposed to domestic violence and to uh, natural disasters. If we could just start here with, with the stellate ganglion block first, and then, you know, that 10 or 20 percent that aren't effectively treated by it, we, I don't even know if we know what that number is yet, but that small number of folks that aren't effectively treated by the Chicago block, move them onto the medication and into the EMDR and all the different other, other approaches. But start with this, because it seems to me that you'd want to start with the simplest, most cost-effective, and ideally most effective solution. Mm -hmm.